According to the Government Employees Pension Law, the GEPF is required to evaluate its actuarial factors at least once every three years. This is to determine the true value of members' benefits. Depending on the evaluation outcome, members' benefits could either decrease or increase. But what are these actuarial factors and how are they being determined? Greetings, I'm once again at the offices of the GEPF and this time around I am joined by Brian Kariza. He is the head of Actuarial and Benefits Administration at the GEPF. Brian, always good to see you, sir. Before we get to all the technicalities, let's just start with a simple explanation. Of what do I, as a member of the GEPF, get as a promise at the end of my term? Thank you, Andile. Uh, it is always a pleasure to meet you. and. Uh, Thank you for this opportunity to present on this difficult topic. Uh, I think that is a good leading question. I think it's always important to remind our members of what the actual benefits they are promised by the fund. So the benefits that are promised to members are defined in terms of what is payable once they reach retirement. Right. And this is a pension that is payable once they stop working. This pension is defined to be um, or is linked to, this, to your years of service is linked to a factor defined in the rules at mm. which you earn uh, a pension each year. This is referred to as an accrual factor, which is currently 1.82%. And is also linked to your last salary, where your last salary is your average salary over your last two years. Right, right, right. What is this actuarial interest? You know, we hear all these words being thrown around. What does it actually mean? And, and how is it a factor in determining what I get as my benefit at the end? So to fully understand actuarial interest factors, we need to understand what exactly we are trying to value. So if we go back to our definition, we've said that the fund promises to pay you a pension in retirement. Right. However, members do have the option of leaving the fund before they reach their retirement age. Right. And I guess one approach would be to expect members to wait up until they reach retirement age before they start drawing on this benefit. But possibly what is more reasonable is an approach where you compensate members for the pension that they're foregoing in the future and then you give them a cash lump sum today. So actuarial interest is expressing that cash lump sum today. It's giving you the cash value of what we should be paying you to compensate for the pension that you're giving up. This only affects members who are leaving or does it also affect members who are staying in the fund? It will only affect the members who are leaving the fund. Members who are staying within the fund are unaffected by any changes to actuarial interest. So, and then why do the actuarial factors have to be updated? What does that mean, updating the factors? So we have to go back to, 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 the, to our definition. So we say the actuarial interest, we're giving you a value today to compensate you for the pension that you're foregoing in the yes. future. For us to be able to determine that value, there are a lot of things that we do not know and we need to make assumptions about that. So for example, we cannot tell you with certainty what salary you're going to retire with. So we need to make assumptions about how salaries are going to grow into the future. Right. So when we speak about updating factors, we're talking about updating them and taking account of the current market conditions. So we'll be updating these assumptions or estimates we make about the future. Now, I, I heard that, you know, um, new factors have, have are lower than previous years. What, what leads to that? I mean, what are the things that influence whether they are reversed higher or lower? So it's actually two key elements. So first one is how what we predicted previously compares to what has actually happened right. over the past three years. And then the second factor is how what we predict to happen in the future has changed compared to what we ex uh, anticipated in the previous valuation. So if we go back to the 2018 valuation, we made certain assumptions about how Salary, salaries are going to grow into the future. Mm -hmm. These assumptions did not necessarily materialize for everyone. Mm. And certain members did not get those increases, which then meant that um, the starting salaries that they have now are lower than what we anticipated them to have right. when we did the initial projections. The consequence of this is that we now expect them to reach their retirement age with lower salaries, right. which would then translate into lower pensions. And do people not, do not then turn around and say, hey, GEPF, you, you are paying me a lower outcome or a lower benefit uh, than, than what you promised me. How do we make sure 
that it's not lower? Or is so it lower? It, if you only look at it in terms of monetary value, then it can be lower. But then we need to understand what exactly is being guaranteed and promised by the fund. Right. We guarantee you the pension that is payable once you reach retirement age. We, however, cannot guarantee you what that pension is worth today. And perhaps it's easier to illustrate through uh, an example. Right. So if we're to think of an imaginary world where instead of getting paid a cash benefit for each year that you work, you're going to receive a physical asset, perhaps a car right. in retirement. I like and steak, so I like your example. <laughs> I like steak too. So let's look at an example where someone has worked for 10 years and they decide to leave the GPF. Right. This person has earned 10 cows, but these cows are only payable in retirement. What would be reasonable? What would be reasonable is for the fund to then pay him a cash equivalent that is enough to purchase these 10 cows today. Now, where is the challenge? We cannot guarantee the price of a cow today. But you must guarantee me my cow. Yes. Aha. If a cow was worth 5,000 last year, someone who retired with 10 years would have received 50,000. And that 50,000 would have been enough to buy 10 cows. Got you. Which is the guarantee that was offered by the fund. Right. Now we're in a situation perhaps for some reason, there's a flood of cows in the market and the price of a cow is reduced and it's now 4,500. Right. A person with 10 years of, ex of service is now entitled to 45,000. Not because we don't want, not because we want to take away money from them, but because that's what is enough to purchase 10 cows in the market today. Right. If we pay them more than 45,000, we're actually paying them more than what they've earned. I see. This will benefit them, but it's coming at the expense of the fund, or more importantly, at the expense of those who are staying within the fund. Right. Similarly, if we're to pay them something lower than that 45,000. That's not fair on them. That's not fair on them, and we unduly benefit the fund. So, so it's about the promise or the benefit, whatever the value of that benefit is at the point that you are leaving the fund. Exactly. So value is different from price, and we guarantee you as a fund to pay you your pension based on the salary that you expected to receive or the last salaries that you expected to receive when you reach your retirement age. However, we cannot guarantee what that, that pension or the, is worth today because that depends on assumptions about the future. But and you guarantee can change. But you guarantee the benefit. We guarantee the benefit. The 10 cows in your example. Exactly. Well, look at that. Even I understand that. Thank you so much, Brian. Appreciate <laughs> your you. time.